Welcome to Real Talk for Real Teachers. My name is Julie Rufo, and I'm the lead content specialist for Conscious Discipline. I've helped produce many of our products and have assisted Dr. Bailey in writing her best-selling books and curriculums for more than two decades. My husband's a high school teacher and Conscious Discipline certified instructor, and we're raising our girls with Conscious Discipline and all the beautiful oopses and growth that comes with that parenting journey. For those of you who are new to Conscious Discipline, Conscious Discipline is a trauma-responsive, brain-based, and evidence-backed approach. It provides a pathway to resiliency, sustainable change, and educational equity by integrating adult-first discipline, school culture, and social and emotional learning within a single methodology. In today's episode of Real Talk for Real Teachers, Dr. Bailey's chatting with Jennifer Kist and Jill Haggerty, two early childhood special education teachers who taught both virtual and in-school last year. With record numbers of classrooms quarantining and so many schools vacillating between in-school and virtual school, Jennifer and Jill show us that meaningful connection and learning can occur in any setting. There's much for us to learn from their experiences, so let's join with Dr. Bailey, Jennifer, and Jill now. And I'll be back to share more with you after the conversation. Welcome and join me in a conversation I'm having with Jennifer and Jill, who did something quite outstanding in their virtual education of early childhood children with special needs. So welcome, Jennifer and Jill. Will you introduce yourself for people that are listening? Sure. Um, I'm Jennifer Kist, and I am an early childhood special education teacher, um, and I teach at the Fort Zumwalt Early Childhood Center in St. Peter's, Missouri. St. Peter's. Yes, and I'm Jill Haggerty. I am also an early childhood special education teacher, and we teach at the same school together. Okay, so you, I could, all I heard was nightmares. <laughs> I mean, you know, and crying. I could hear it, you know, all over the world of these and, and these horror stories of trying to do uh, virtual instruction uh, with a four-year-old, more or less a four-year-old with some special needs, and so. Tell me, first of all, just tell me how it went and what you did, uh, and then we'll get into the details. Okay. The overall thing. What happened? Okay. Well, um, at the beginning of the school year, we had both taught the previous year, of course, in-person kids. And uh, at the beginning of the school year, we realized that we were going to need some teachers to teach children that were going to be staying home and learning virtually. And so... um, I think Jill and I, you know, we've been doing it for a while. We've been doing conscious discipline for a while. And, and um, our director asked, you know, if, if maybe we would be interested in doing Oh, some my God, so virtual. you volunteered for this. Well, we were kind of asked, and then we said <laughs> yes. 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 Okay. Yes. Great. <laughs> and then they gave us um, the kids, our, our class list, the kids' IEPs, and our laptops, and said, here you go. And so we were like, okay, what should we do? And we, we had to come up with how we were going to make this happen because obviously there was no um, curriculum guidance or instruction no. for teaching no. children virtually. So, And in addition to that, we were also both teaching in-person classes As because well. at the Early Childhood Center, we have two half-day programs, okay. an AM program and a PM program. So I was teaching in person in the morning, and my afternoon was virtual, and she was just the opposite. She taught virtual in the morning and then in person in the afternoon. So shifting gears from being in person to then building relationships and really working on skills over the computer was quite um, different Mm -hmm. than anything that we've ever done before. You know what's amazing me is I'm looking at y'all and y'all are just so tickled. I mean, you're over there smiling like, Look what we did. This is, this is this. what we looked like when they, when we were given this. We were like, mm-hmm. All right, we'll figure it out. And, <laughs> and, and indeed, you did. Yeah. So, uh, and of course, you're embedding conscious discipline. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, start with that. How did you embed conscious discipline into this virtual world? 
It's kind of well, neat the way it all came together because we sat down. There was also another virtual teacher with us, and we all sat down at the beginning of the school year and said, you know, connection is so important, and we need that even though we're going to be seeing our students on a screen. So we all collaborated, worked together, and we came up with our conscious discipline um, Brain Smart Start book. School family And book. we made a school family book so that even when our children weren't there with us in person, they still felt connected as a school family on the computer with us. So they each had their own home book and we would put their pictures in the treasure chest or their heart in the treasure chest to acknowledge that they were there. We would wish well the students that were not there. They would make a commitment um, in the home setting with their families. And the best part was that the parents were sitting right next to them. And so what an opportunity for us to coach too, right. because there were some moments where students were dysregulated and having you know moments of upset. So what a great opportunity for us to then be able to coach a parent through, yeah. okay, this is what it looks like. Here are the words that you can say. This is what you can utilize. Um, and then giving the parents an opportunity to practice right there with us on screen. Okay, so let me see if I've got this. So you got together, you collaborated, but you made a, a kind of a, a, a school family, in, in this specifics, a Brain Smart Start book. Yes. So, and, and the kids got one at home. Yes. So they were actually, so they would, you would, they would open their book and pull their picture out and put it in a, tra was it? Well, on Velcro, how did you do uh -huh. We used lots of Velcro, lots of Velcro. and lots of laminate <laughs> last year. Okay. Um, yes. So yeah, we, we basically knew that, you know, looking at a screen, they were going to have to have everything that we had in front of us, they were going to have to have in front of them. Yes. We knew they would need that. So, um, and we knew that we needed to do a, a circle time that included a brain smart start. Yeah. And so um, we just kind of uh, figured out how we could um, do exactly what we do in class. So we would start our day every morning. For mm -hmm. our, our kids go for four mornings a week, uh -huh. or four days a week. So every day at the same time, we would have circle time. And it lasted about 20, 20 minutes at the beginning, maybe closer 30. to 30 yeah. by the end. Um, and we would start with, uh, you know, when everyone's popping on, you're, of course, all saying hello and greeting them. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, virtually, you can still do different greetings and things so uh, we would everyone would get a greeting and now did you have any that uniquely stood out that were kind of fun or did anybody um, well I don't know if Jill did or not honestly mine mostly my guys were pretty little and pretty so mostly when they get on they were yelling hello hello and and wanting to tell us about you know as all of them do when they come in yeah. they want to tell you about what was going on yeah. mm -hmm. um, so we didn't do a lot of different ones yes um, I don't know if you did or not, but we've talked about different ones since then. That oh yes, definitely. And and there was one particular student that I had that wanted to keep his routine the same every day, just as he would if he was in person yes. with me. And so I knew every time that he got on, we were just going to do an air high five, and that was going to be our greeting every yes. day. I didn't even need to think about it. Mm -hmm. um, and then other students chose other um, greetings, you know, depending on the day. But yeah. Okay, so you did the greeting. So we did the greeting, uh -huh. and then we would always get moving, uh -huh. of course. So we would have a, a song. Mm -hmm. So we would do um, lots of, we use lots of Learning Station, lots of Jack Hartman, yep. lots yes. of your, yes. um, lots of seasonal things. Yes. Always action songs mm -hmm. that were repetitive and kept them moving, but mostly kept them seated. Because mm -hmm. we also, um, one of the things we knew in the beginning was that there would need to be a parent present and that the child would need to have a special school spot that they used every single day that was their spot yes. for school, um, a chair with their computer in front of them. So we got them really moving, did our song, mm -hmm. and then we would move into um, our treasure. Like I used a treasure chest. I, I had, a had a heart. Mm -hmm. But um, so we would flip to that page. We'd say, let's get out our school family circle time book. And everyone got out their book. The cover had our uh, school's logo on it, and it said our school family circle time book and the child's mm -hmm. name. And so they would flip to the first page. Jill's was a heart, mine mm -hmm. was a treasure chest, mm -hmm. and every child's picture on or the heart. bottom mm -hmm. on a little picture of them with Velcro. Mm -hmm. And so we would go through, greet each child, and, and I had an amazing, amazing para, paraprofessional that worked with me. 
Um, and I think most of the time, Jill was doing mm -hmm. hers on her own. Mm -hmm. And so my pair would sing to each child, choose their name and sing to them. And then we would all say, you know, if they sang, she sang to Asher, then we would all say, hi, Asher. And every, all the children on the screen would say hello. And then they would all take Asher's picture and put him in the treasure chest. Oh, so everyone's so, working collectively on yeah. that. And I had the real treasure chest at right, school, school, of course, with their sticks and pictures and put them in. And then each child put yeah. each child's picture in. And how about you, Jill, on yours? Now, was it because you're doing this all by yourself? Mm -hmm. Did you find any struggles or? Um, at first, I found struggles with just trying to balance. And, um, you know, there are times where I would need to show a visual. And so it was nice for Jen to have her paraprofessional there because she was also on screen. So if Jennifer needed a visual, then her paraprofessional was able to hold that up. Um, I ended up figuring out how to use a hover cam for my um, for my virtual learning and show my visuals that way so that was a little challenging at first um, but we adapted very well I will say on our connection song that I had my kiddos stand up and their parent was their partner and so I did a lot of parent partner ships Fantastic. with my students and at first it was really interesting to see parents they were a little hesitant, hesitant mm -hmm. um, to participate and by the end they were were all in. I just fully engaged with that. Excellent. Okay. So then after. So the then, um, obviously, whoever's pictures left is not there then. Yes. Mm -hmm. So then we would uh, pull off those pictures, mm -hmm. flip the page, and on the other side is a wishful heart. Mm -hmm. So then we would sing um, the wishful song, mm -hmm. and we do the wishful song that we sing mm -hmm. and um, do it in sign language. So the uh, kids would sing to the person, we would shout out their name and send them love. And then we would take their picture and put it in their wishful heart. Similar so. with you, Jill? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We yeah. would put the we heart. We had the same books. Yes, we did. Mm -hmm. And, and you, know, the, uh, you know, you said this earlier, but I'm just, uh, I can't but um, imagine the beauty of what you could do with having that parent and the child it was sit together. Now, we, I don't think we can say enough about the magic no. that was uh, of the connection of the, the school family connection that was made with the children and the parents. Yes. And I will tell you, Dr. Bailey, we sent home huh. breathing strategies, how to do the breathing strategies, all was behind them in their virtual learning environment. So if a parent, you know, if a child was having a hard time, a parent could help them access those things right there. Definitely. Wow. Definitely. Now, really. did you instruct them or did the parents just start setting this up kind of intuitively? Well, so we kind of, it was kind of a so combination of both. We gave some guidance at the beginning, like uh, these would be helpful things to have in the area where your child would be working. Um, I had a couple of parents that kind of took it to the next level and really just displayed, yeah, sure. you well, know, everything. It, it, it kind of depended. I mean, well, I don't know if we should finish with the brain smart stuff. Yeah, let's finish. Yeah. But because let's I know, yeah, because this but, is um, exciting. Um, so, so we did the wish well, and then the, I did. Oh, oh, so then I did commit. They did yes. So then mm -hmm. the, there's another page in the book with all of our class commitments. Mm -hmm. So whatever you do for your class, whatever we had posted, we just shrunk it down, put mm -hmm. it on the book, and then we just took a little heart, mm -hmm. put the heart on a piece of Velcro, and that's how they chose their commitment. We would go yeah. through, and they could talk about, you know, each thing. What are you going to pick today? What's your commitment? And they would stick their heart. Mm -hmm. So then they were able to come back and look at it the next day. Did, were you able to, um, you know, did you have an oops day or were you able to? So, and everyone's doing their work kind of simultaneously yes, in, yes, in, yes. in their locations. Yes. And how many was the whole classroom? Was it? Um, well, numbers? I think I started with seven. Mine mm -hmm. were all boys. Um, but my kids were a little bit, I had um, several children, a couple of children with Down syndrome, a couple of children with autism, um, some that were just had social yeah. emotional IPs, but I think mine were tend to be a little younger than yours maybe, mm -hmm. and so, you know, a little less language. Yes. Um, so I had pre-K, most, um, mm -hmm. all of my students, in fact, uh, we're going to kindergarten mm -hmm. um, this upcoming fall. And uh, I had five kiddos to begin with. And slowly, um, parents started in yeah. the second semester um, I, deciding that they wanted to come, come back to in-person learning. So, so. Okay. so then we would do, of course, flip the page. And mm -hmm. then we had all the breathing strategies. Yes. Right. 
So each day, you know, and over the, uh, those of course took time, but mm -hmm. over the course of time, we had jobs mm -hmm. and someone could choose what our breathing strategy, we were, you know, which one we were gonna practice for the day. They would again move their heart mm -hmm. to that spot and we would all practice breathing mm -hmm. together. We had a song, so. I had a song selector. So I would give them two choices with visuals. What song did they want to sing today to, to start us out? Mm -hmm. um, they would choose that song. So we really tried to give jobs just like we would in a classroom. They just looked a little bit. Okay, so let's stay with that a minute now. So you had a song selector. Uh, selector. Give me some other n jobs you came up with. Uh. Um, I had a schedule person that would just tell us what, what three things we were going to accomplish in our little call. I also had a breath chooser, take a breath helper. So they would choose the breath we were going to do for that day. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to think of. I think um, mine, um, I, like I said, I had some kids that didn't. Yeah. So some of my kids, um, their job remained the same. I had one little boy whose job it was to help. He, he did visuals. So I had all these the, the child needed the visuals himself to help him yes. to get through. Mm -hmm. So I had all the visuals and I would, like I had my own visual schedule. I would hold up a picture when we were going to do our circle time book, or I'd hold up a picture when it was time for the goodbye song. I sent all the same visuals home for him and I would tell him, you know, it's time to do the goodbye song, where's our, and he would hold up the visual in front of the camera for all the kids to see. Oh, how wonderful. Wonderful. Okay, tell me more. So, I mean, so then, um, in addition, so then that that would be the first part of our circle time, and then at the end of our circle time, we were also doing activities with the kids that hit those other areas they needed language, um, you know, reading pre pre K skills, uh, fine mm -hmm. motor skills, and things. And so what we were doing was every week, um, we were working and working and working to create materials because we knew we couldn't teach anything without them having it in their hands at home. Right. So um, weekly or bi-weekly, mm -hmm. uh, parents would come up to school, we made canvas bags, and we would load them down with materials that we had created, and they would take those bags home and they would have the next week's lessons in the bags. Um, it took a lot of organization and work mm -hmm. and, and brainstorming of ideas, mm -hmm. but um, they would mm -hmm to have an activity then, maybe it was a storybook with mm -hmm. um, a craft, and every kid would do it, mm -hmm. um, and then we'd end our circle time. Well, in addition to that, they all had IEP goals that they needed to meet, mm -hmm. and so some of them were social emotional goals. Um, I had a child that had, you know, he, he needed to work on um, play skills, another one that needed to work on conflict resolution or whatever. Mm -hmm. So we would do individual lessons, individual mm -hmm. sessions mm -hmm. with the kids where for, 20 or 30 minutes at mm -hmm. a time, they would meet one-on-one -on -one with us. And that's when we were doing feeling buddy lessons, mm -hmm. reading Sophie books and mm -hmm. talking out scenarios. Um, using teaching, puppets. Using puppets, mm -hmm. making, creating a, maybe a pretzel as a craft as we were teaching pretzel breathing. Mm -hmm. um, and you have to realize the whole time the parent was sitting right, right there, there. Um, learning right along, learning the language. Mm -hmm learning our, watching our, our expressions, everything with this child. Mm -hmm. um, and then sometimes children would melt on camera. Yes. Yeah. And so then you would have someone crying or screaming in the middle of a brain smart start. Well, just like at school, you can't go on. Mm -hmm. So Stop. how often mm -hmm. would we, as a class, as we're talking about child, and you can't physically be there with them, so the parent is having to do that. And it was beautiful, because then they were um, learning how to do that with their child. The rest of the children, their parents are sitting with that child, helping to comfort them about the child that's upset on the screen. And then we would all stop and breathe, breathe for and, and well. with that child and wish well. Mm -hmm. And it was beautiful. Some of the children that um, we had last year because Jill and I were blessed. Some of these kids came back to us. They were in our classroom with us last yeah. year. And I'm thinking it specifically about one of my little boys that when his friend would melt, he would sit and I'd, we'd see him on the screen and my pair would comment because he would start to go. And it was a little guy that had some pretty severe language things going on. And, you know, they, they 
still you could see those connections that the screen was didn't take breathing away. for its friend yeah breathing for mm -hmm. its friend and I got to do some social emotional learning and utilization of conscious discipline structures with a student of mine um, who I had had for about a year and a half prior um, not counting the pandemic we did some work with her uh, during that time as well but I was meeting with her for four days a week um, on screen doing social emotional learning only. So I was regulation. doing lessons on self-regulation, doing lessons on perspective taking, doing lessons on taking turns. And her mom would offer me information about something that could have occurred at their home during that week. And she would say, do you have any ideas for this? So then I would create a lesson based upon what they were experiencing at home and help her with her social emotional regulation in those situations. So yeah. then tell her, so then the special gift with that child? Oh, is that I, I ended up doing uh, something different in my afternoons because all of my students came back in second semester. So I ended up doing some um, pull out and push in for social emotional yeah. learning. And my little girl that I had worked with for, you know, those four yeah. days a week, diligently came back to Jennifer's my classroom. For the la just for the last six weeks of school. And, and she was going to kindergarten this next year. Mm -hmm. We had her at the school since she was three. And, yes. And she gave us, I mean, I know she gave Jill a pretty good run for her money in the beginning. <laughs> You know, she and and we integrated her into my classroom for that last six weeks. Mm -hmm. We were just talking about her this morning and how I was a little nervous because we had a real established school family in my afternoon. Those kids were real. And so she, Jill brought her in to visit a couple times first. And I told my kids we're getting a new school family member and she's going to come visit today. And I mean, my of course, because I, a lot of those kids I've had for two years too, and their school family connection is outstanding. She came in and it was just beautiful. beautiful. I mean, that child, um, the first day she came in and our first Brain Smart start, I had taken her picture when she came to visit, but she, I guess she didn't notice I took her picture. Yeah. <laughs> and that first morning at Brain Smart start, we went to sing and we were singing to all the kids. I did a few so she would know how. Mm -hmm. And then I held up her picture and she looked at me and got a really angry look on her face and folded her arms and said, where did you get my? And I said, oh, honey, remember this? Look, I took this picture when you were in my room. Do you see it around you? And, and she was OK. But she was really, you know, I think it took maybe two or three days. I was going to say, it wasn't very it long. It wasn't long at all. Mm -mm. And uh, you know, we, I won't get into it all, but I talked to the mother, I talked to Jill. And the mother was like, she is coming home. And it's, it's so beautiful. She's so happy. And she was right in there. Um, with everyone. With everybody. Do you think, Jill, if you hadn't had that kind of one-on-one -on -one with her, uh, even though it was virtual, mm -hmm. that she could have entered that classroom as well uh, without that? No, I really don't. I think that through all of the strategies and structures that I was utilizing with her and really taking the information her mom was giving to me, listening to yes. that, planning lessons based upon that. Um, you know, she went from a little girl who could not self-regulate independently. She needed co-regulation for a good year and a half to a kiddo who came into her classroom and, and was help, helping to regulate the other others. And, students. And, and was able to say, I don't like it when you do that. Please yes. step away. Yeah, I mean, she really was. It was, it was pretty outstanding. <laughs> that is amazing, absolutely yeah. amazing. And you know, and now as I'm listening to you, and I'm kind of have my teacher hat on, that took a lot of extra uh, preparation. Oh, I mean, you're hours making and hours. yes, hours and hours and hours, uh, and of course, I see the payoff. Yeah. But let's let's say. Uh, let's take a, a less than ideal mm -hmm. situation so that we can give some tips for I don't have much uh, we don't have many resources in our school sure. I don't even have the resources to make d duplicates sure. we don't even have a, a, a laminating machine yeah. for heaven's sakes <laughs> so let's end this kind of with uh, as you're thinking about that I mean it's still doable. Very doable. So Very doable. let's say 
think of each of you, 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 think, you think, Jill, about maybe two or three things that anyone could do under any situation, regardless of resources or assistance in Velcroing and laminating and stuff. So, Jill, why don't you go first? Okay. Just, it, it, you're talking to the, uh, a teacher out here that's just like you, got thrown into a virtual world and still may get thrown back into a virtual world. Or some may decide maybe some of this we can, I can reach more one-on-one -on -one without traveling 85 counties, you know, kind of situation those just everyday people, give us like three tips. What would you say that can definitely be done? I would say number one is connection. Connection is still possible. Even if we didn't have our school family books, if we didn't have access to a laminator and all of the, you are still able to make a connection with that child, a greeting, a song that you share together, a wish well, breathing every day, you're still able to make that connection with, the, with that child. I think another connection would be the parent side of it too. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't have the resources, you have the ability as the teacher, and especially being versed in conscious discipline, to model mm -hmm. for that mom or that dad or that grandparent what are the, what's the language I can use? What, what do I do in these particular situations? So I don't necessarily need, although, you know, the videos that we did show, the conscious discipline videos that we did share with our families were very helpful, but we can model and walk through that too without needing additional resources, I would say. And I think the third thing is that you can still accomplish teaching a child a skill that they might be lagging, even if you're not in person with them. And I think that that was evident by the social emotional foundations that I, we were laying for that child mm -hmm. as we were moving through things and taking those situations, like I stated before, where parents were telling me what was going on in the home. I didn't need any resources to reteach that situation to that child. I could pose a situation for them. She was kind of funny when I was doing it. She's like, you're talking about me, aren't you? You know, I mean, yeah. she, she kind of got that information, but I think you can til still, excuse me, teach a lagging skill to a student without needing yeah. the bells yes. and whistles. Yes, and I think that, that last one, all of them were brilliant, but that last one in two by, you know, like with conscious discipline, we say, uh, you know, the curriculum shows up on the bus or, or, or however they get to school. It's the child and the child's life and their interaction. So it uh, the, the curriculum molds around the child's interaction skills and world itself. And you were able to extend that by listening to the family and saying, you know, we have this issue going on here and then you can recreate it. Brilliant. Okay, Jennifer, and what some, do you got? Some, um, so I'll tell you about like some physical actual lessons yes. and things that, um, so one thing that I did a lot was I would, um, get on to like Pinterest and find those freebies and yeah. things like that. Um, so sometimes it was as simple as that. Another thing, a lot of times I would pick a, a good storybook mm -hmm. and, um, you know, like a, um, something that's pretty repetitive or whatever and send home um, along with that storybook. You can you know, we, you don't have to have a lot of uh, like like the printer and the yes. the ink and the laminating yes. and yeah. all of that. Um, you can send home a, a, a plain piece of paper or mm. and and cutting. You know, we we are early childhood, mm. so using a scissors is a, a huge yes. skill. Yeah. <laughs> um, so if you have a book that you're reading about snow and you send home a white sheet of paper, kids can cut and make snow yeah. <laughs> at the end, practice cutting. Um, so one thing that we did do was uh, along at the beginning of the year, along with the school family books, we sent home a pouch of supplies. So mm -hmm. they each had a school pouch with crayons and scissors and pencil yeah. and, and all the things that they might need yeah. for the act, a glue stick and things like that. Um, another thing was musical instruments. Um, we could, when you send home, uh, um, or when you do songs, you can send home Easter eggs with um, beans in them, tape shut, uh, shakers, um, anything that made music was always a fun activity. 
Um, and uh, we did a whole lot of, like we would do letter of the week. Mm -hmm. So then your whole, once you do your brain smart start, you just, your 10 or 15 minute activity is to um, do the Jack Hartman letter yeah. songs yeah. and then a dry erase board and dry erase markers. I mean, yeah. how often did we take that out and practice writing our letters? <laughs> Yeah. Or do a journal writing, you know, um, where they are drawing or writing about something. Yes. So there are lots of ways that you can um, not spend a lot of money and do those things that you're, you're doing in your classroom. Um, sometimes, occasionally, not a lot, we would ask if the parents had something at home already. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. But we, we didn't do that a lot because we don't ever we didn't ever want to have to put that on, yeah. you know, just in case. Or have a student not not be able, not to, be able yeah. to participate yeah well those are indeed and i'm sure everyone listening is like first of all your enthusiasm your passion and and the success you saw and your willingness to dig in is contagious um, i mean you sent me a beautiful video i got to watch it and then to see y'all and 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 to share this information for everyone and and so it one last question so in how long then was a day right. for or in hours or right. for a child? Yeah. I mean, was it, well, you we, talk about the circle time and then some mm -hmm. extra, mm -hmm. and then that extra piece you did one-on-one. Yeah. -on -one, that was a whole nother challenge because, yes. um, so at the beginning of the year, we, we rewrote all the children's IEPs to reflect virtual learning. So if a child had 60 minutes a week in language, we maybe took that down to 30 minutes a week in language or whatever, yes. you know? So um, we never wanted to keep uh, the young child on the computer for more than an hour. And that wasn't day. at the same time. Yeah. We would do separate sessions. So no in, more than 30 minutes per yeah. session. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so our circle time would maybe be 30. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then um, one child may have a 30 minute language on Tuesday and Thursday and a 30 minute um, social emotional on Monday. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we had to figure out each child's schedule according to what their IEP goals were and what services they got. Um, our, our entire staff at Fort Zumal Early Childhood is amazing. So mm -hmm. we had, um, uh, my occupational therapist did occupational therapy virtually, which was amazing. Our language therapist did language, language virtually. Mm -hmm. um, and so they were never on for more than an hour a day. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good to know. Well, thank you so much you. for being with us. And for those who uh, aren't sitting here in this room and will never know, but their principal's sitting over here uh, uh, cheering them on and, and just beaming like a, well, a, a proud mother of... Uh, well, and uh, you know, we have to give her... I mean, we tell our directors this all the time. We've got her and two other amazing directors and the school family feel in our building is like no other. And if we didn't have that kind of support, I don't know that we would have done anything close to what we were able to no. do this year. But. Well, thank you so much for sharing and thank you for being with us. Thank, thank you so you. much. Teaching in the virtual world is not for the faint hearted and Jill and Jennifer handled it with grace. They saw virtual learning as an opportunity to bring SEL skills into the home and connect students' home families with the school family in ways that wouldn't have been possible otherwise. Their approach to virtual learning focused on connection and was individualized enough to meet each child's needs while being universal enough to function collectively. It took lots of Velcro and lamination in their case, but most importantly, it took a lot of heart to accomplish what Jennifer and Jill did. And as these amazing educators reminded us at the end, you can connect with children and deliver quality SEL skills regardless of access to a copy machine and lamination. You and the child's connection with you is the strongest motivator for all learning. A firm routine enhanced by connecting rituals creates the perfect balance of structure, novelty, and relationship building needed to foster an optimal brain state for learning. Then, their ability to use upset moments as opportunities to teach and model self-regulation for the upset child, the classmates, and the family members present provided state-dependent learning for all members. If you're curious about the specific resources Jennifer and Jill mentioned, all of the active calming icons and instructions and many other reproducibles are available at no cost on the free resources section of our website. 
A customizable version of the BrainSmart Start book they created is available to attendees of this month's Infant Toddler Institute, as well as to our premium resources members online. Relationship building, active calming, wishing well, connection songs, self-regulation, skills modeling, and school family structures like meaningful jobs for every student, daily commitments, and a safekeeper treasure chest are all accessible, no-cost ways to increase the social-emotional aptitude and learning potential of all students. Check out the dozens of free webinars on our website that can provide the insights you need to make a difference today. ConsciousDiscipline.com slash free dash resources. Thank you, Jennifer and Jill, for sharing a little bit of your enthusiasm and innovation with us. Your dedication to Conscious Discipline and the families in your care is inspiring. So what have Dr. Bailey and Conscious Discipline been up to? We are closing out our summer events and settling into what's proving to be an unusual back-to-school season. Our focus this fall is providing an essential sense of stability and connection for our practitioners and students. For 25 years as an SEL leader, our most important role has been that of safekeeper. Everything we do is built on a foundation of safety and connection. Now more than ever, we find this to be true. Children cannot learn to self-regulate unless they see and experience compassionate, regulated adults. This is our core responsibility as safekeepers and the foundation on which connection and an optimal learning state are built. We hope that in the coming months, you will choose to honor your own social and emotional needs so you can remain a safekeeper who brings the best of who you are to your relationships, the children and families you serve, and yourself. Our Connecting with Hard to Reach Children workshop in Wisconsin. Our workshop titled Connecting with Hard to Reach Children in Wisconsin, October 22nd to 23rd, and our Conscious Discipline for Students with Autism workshop in Florida this December seek to help you in bringing safety and connection to some of the children who need it most during this time of challenge and change. And if traveling isn't in your comfort zone or your budget right now, we encourage you to look into our Building Resiliency Return to School in Uncertain Times online training and our Understanding Trauma webinar series with Dr. Bailey. You and the children in your care have been through so much personally and in your school experiences these past 18 months. Discovering new ways to support healing, social and emotional learning, resiliency, and healthy relationship building is the key to moving us forward and shifting this difficult dynamic from survival to successful. You can do this, and we're here to help. I hope our time together today has brought you a bit of insight and enjoyment. Until next time, I wish you well. For more episodes of Real Talk with Real Teachers by Dr. Becky Bailey, visit ConsciousDiscipline.com forward slash podcasts. You can also subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, or your favorite podcast app.